Hi, Light Chip Chaplain here today, and uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, how the Lord gave me a pastor's heart in 1999 in a vision. It was grass beating, and it was only for a second after I got married to my wife uh, for about a year. It was about a year after I was married, and I asked my wife, I says, well, I just had this beautiful vision of a heart being full of rich green grass. I said, what do you think it means? And my wife said she had no idea. And I'm telling the story again because I think it's important um, for what I'm about to say today. The next day, Alistair Begg on Truth for Life came on the radio and explained that the word pastor was derived from the word pasture. And it is only God who gives a man a pastor's heart. That's exactly what happened. No more, no less. I can say that I did see a shadowy figure as I was warming up my car the next morning after I had that vision. And, if, and as I was listening to that on the radio, who would be next to me, pressing against my shoulder to shoulder um, when my heart stopped on my 20 years and motor survival training within the Army. But um, this was the Lord Jesus Christ. And a lot of people say, well, do you think it was an angel or do you think it was this or do you think it was that? No, it was the Lord Jesus Christ. And how do I know it was the Lord Jesus Christ? Because all the way back when I was in street ministry and I prayed about my name, I went down to Roland Park Dell. And I didn't realize uh, at the time that was the name of the place. And of course, my name's Roland Dell. And I was praying about the meaning of my name. And there was a soldier with an angel above it, just like Gideon. So, you know, in my personal walk, there's little things that speak to every believer that truly knows and follows the Lord Jesus Christ in their heart as to who they are and to what God is calling them into. Not to say that uh, we can say that we've entered into the fullness of it. But we enter in by obedience, listening, and following Jesus Christ alone. This is how we're in to the kingdom of heaven, is by being saved, sanctified, set apart, regenerated by the Lord Jesus Christ. But but it's not just a it's not just a matter of purchasing fire insurance and we're set for eternity. Oh, I got this fire insurance paid by the blood of the Lamb. I'm good to go. Now, now it has to do with abiding in Christ, which over half, half of the scriptures, even in the Old Testament, had to do with listening and moving in God and not moving in independence. Whenever people moved in independence of God, when they wanted to do it themselves, disaster followed because they compromised. Well, I think about the Puritans. Why do they call them, why do they call themselves Puritans? Because they knew that the only way they could follow Christ is in the pure light of truth. They couldn't have any compromise. They couldn't have any mixture. They couldn't have anything that um, that uh, kept them from following the Holy Spirit within them. And we have the scriptures. The scriptures is like a technical manual for people who have Christ. And the problem is a lot of people go to seminaries, learn their Bible, and learn these things, but they don't actually have Jesus Christ. Yeah, they may say the words. They may say the sinner's prayer, but you know, that doesn't mean anything. It has to do with what's going on in your heart. And it has God cho chosen you before the foundations of the earth. And a lot of people just uh, just say these words and uh, and think they have fire insurance. And, uh, you know, they're going to they're gonna live with Jesus in heaven when they die. They're going to be in the new Jerusalem. But I'm telling you something that I've noticed in my life is um, I don't think most people... Um, most people really know him or follow him. Uh, there's a lot better people educated than I am, a lot more educated than I am, can speak a lot better than me. But what I'm going to talk about today is some of the things that I've noticed in my Christian life uh, and um, the, the people that the Lord has chosen to lead me to and work through and speak to me. And most of them, most of them have not been church people. Most of them have not been religious people. They haven't been um, 
formally trained by an institution. Um, now, Dr. Gross was formally trained. He spent 22 years in seminary, DD, THD, PhD. But yet, people would say to me, well, why doesn't he put himself under somebody's authority? He just wants to be a loose cannon. He wants to have control. Why doesn't he put himself under a nice denomination? And this is the man who taught me how to walk in the spirit when I served in street ministry. Well, the reason why is because if he were to put himself under a religion, I'm going to use the word religion in this sense, the broad, broad meaning for the church through um, ceremonial type of thing, ceremonial wedding, ceremonial uh, funerals, ceremonial, uh, you know, all the things that we associate with the church and religion. And uh, you know what? It's all a bunch of bunk. That's why. It's a bunch of nonsense that Satan uses to take your heart off of following Christ within you, if you truly know him. And it's taken the Lord 30 years probably over 30 years, probably all my life, if you will, to to, uh, to open my eyes to these things. Um, because Dr. Gross wouldn't get entrenched in a systematic theology that wouldn't allow him to follow the Lord. And everybody that God's ever used in my life to teach me how to walk in the Spirit to follow Christ is not a part of our religion. I'm out of that religious institution because they have been choked by theologies, doctrines. Uh, lean not to your own understanding, but follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what the scriptures actually speak about. And people want to learn up the scriptures, and they want to be God to you. They want to control you. And God has spared me, called me out from amongst these type of institutions. And... You know, to the best of my understanding, I thought I could do something for the Lord, for the calling that he's put into my life. And I'm finding that uh, I cannot be conformed to any institution, to any um, religion, to any church system. Because once I conform myself to any of those, I cannot follow the Holy Spirit within me. There's... Satan's automatically competing using religion and following the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's horrifying to me that I have to say these things to people. I mean, I really wish it could be a, more of a broad road that Jesus loves everybody and calls everybody. And once saved, always saved. We've come to Christ. You know, we, we're, we're forgiven for our sins. We're covered by the Lamb's blood. But the whole thing is, we have to follow Christ. And I found that everything in the world, everything in the world, do you hear what I'm saying? Compromises with following the Lord. Every institution, anything that man touches is defiled. It, comp it compromises in following the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is something that I'm learning. And, and you know, I'm horrified. And people may think me a radical or, I don't know, a, a nutcase for saying this, but I'm, I'm sharing my personal spiritual experience with you all today on this video. And I'm saying that every time every time I've ever walked into a, um, a formal religious setting or, or been to a formal school, well, let's, let's, we're studying this book today. We're studying this book on discipleship. We're studying this. We're studying that. It kills. It kills me from hearing my Lord. And most of these people that study these books, I don't think, really have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't need to study a book to follow the Lord Jesus Christ if you belong to him. He's instru he instrumentally uh, um, puts people in your path and things in your life because it's his church, his power, that uh, teaches you things within your life. You don't have to go to an institution or follow men. Now, it's good to have elders. And the only elders that I've ever, I've ever known are people that know how to listen and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and uh, I will say that the, the first one was a Calvinist, and he still is a Calvinist. I'm a Calvinist too, except that I think that you can walk choose to walk away from the Lord. 
and be burnt. You can choose to be pruned. You can settle for an easier life to be comfortable within the world. You can fit into a church body where everybody accepts you. But you know what? You can't do that. I'm convinced you can't do that and follow the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart. You have to be an oddball. You have to expect to be rejected by the world if you're truly following Christ because nothing else can compromise. Nothing else can compete with, with your heart for following the Lord. And this is why the Lord gave me that vision of the pastor's heart because the pastor's heart vision for me is to tell people exactly what I'm telling them. You have to listen, follow, and obey the Lord Jesus Christ within your spirit. God works through people individually. We don't have a uh, uh, assembly line Jesus thing going on. Oh, get in line here and come up to the altar and accept Jesus. No, Jesus Christ works in the people that he chooses to work in and give the gifts to people that he chooses to give them to. We don't do anything independent of the Lord. It is the Lord's work, not our works. And this is something that I've I've come to find out and, and always wondered why I was such an oddball within the church community. It's because I'm following Christ to the best of my ability within my spirit as he gives me eyes to see. You know, I want to talk a little today about marriage, marriage vows, Christ in the church, marriage. Paul talked about that. Well, number one, we know in the creation that God made man out of the earth, edema, I've heard said, red clay. He breathed life into them. And after some time, he formulated the woman. He, she was a clone, if you will, from the man. He took part of the man and created the woman, woven out of man. And there's a certain biblical order that exists in the Bible. Everybody says they go from the, through, from the Bible, but there's a biblical order that exists in the Bible, and that is spiritual authority is given unto men. I don't care how many women can speak better than I can speak. I don't care how many women are, uh, have PhDs and are, are so much uh, more adept than their intellect and their understanding than I am. It doesn't matter because God's order is God's order. And if you're truly going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, you have to know him, know his order, in order to know that you're not being deceived while you're following him. This is why we have doctrines. But no, Satan wants to compromise the truth of God. He wants to make it pink and fluffy. Everybody can know Jesus. We can go out there and bring everybody to the Lord. It's just not so. The Lord says he will build his church. And that's what he does within his people. And this is a, this is a very, very stunning truth that's starting to sink into my spirit. The Lord's starting to show me that I cannot be involved in anything that competes with him. And that includes churches or Bible studies. Now, you can have a Bible study if you have a, an elder, somebody who is elder to you spiritually. And I've been accused of having spiritual pride. But I've been accused of having spiritual pride by people that can't hear the Lord. That's the first thing I, I go by is, can, you, can this person hear the Lord? Is this, has the Lord ever spoken to them? My sheep hear my voice, Jesus says. And there's very few that can. I'm sorry to say. So when I listen and move in the Lord, I told my wife when I got married, um, Charles Stanley had a thing about hearing God. The only pastor I know that ever preached that on TV was about hearing God. And now I understand why, because most people do not. And that's because most people, I don't believe, are his. And if they do start with him, if they do come to the point of salvation, they take the broad road. And the broad road is anything that competes with Christ. That's why Christ told, you know, said that to the scribe, I believe it was in Matthew. Well, much I do to follow you. And he said, you know, the birds have their, their nests in the air and the foxes have their holes in the ground, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. He's talking about people following him as spirit. The other guy says, let me go bury my father. The guy's father wasn't even dead yet. He's talking about people following him in spirit. Everything in the scriptures, and both in the Old and New Testament, are talking about listening and following God. And nothing, nothing should compete with that. And I'm sorry if this isn't politically correct. 
because God's above politics. God's above, above man's sociology. God created man and woman, woven out of the man. And there's a certain order that he gives and ministry. You're not going to change God. I don't care how much you like it or you don't like it. And these people that, that, that are trained up uh, on intellectual basis and theology and doctrines way better than I'll ever be, they're still wrong if they don't follow the Lord Jesus Christ, if they don't know the Lord and have his power uh, coursing through their veins, so to speak. It's, it's a counterfeit, and Satan loves to counterfeit the things of God. So if you're going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ in your life, if you're going to move in the Spirit, you have to be quiet. You have to listen. You have to ask him to show you uh, how to move and what people to put in your path. And you have to be open to listening to him. And so I guess the main reason I make, I'm making this video today is because all the men that God has ever used to instruct me have been outside of the mainstream. They have been humble men. They have been people that are rejected by the church for the most part. I mean, Dr. Gross was an expert in when they had Bible stores. If you had a Bible question, you'd call him up and ask him about it. But yet he wouldn't be accepted by churches. He was too radical for him. And you know why? Because he followed the Lord Jesus Christ in his heart, and he wouldn't compromise with that. And this is something that I've that I've found now that I'm 53. That the only men that I know that really walk with the Lord, they're outside the mainstream. They're separate. They are set apart. And this is the people that God's led me to and instructed me through. And it's because I'm set apart. I'm outside the mainstream because I hear the Lord. And I won't let anything compromise with that lest I be a castaway. Well, friends, dear friends out there, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ through his blood atonement on the cross, if the Holy Spirit's entered into you and you've had an experience with God, let me encourage you to go on with the Lord. Don't let Satan come in and say, well, you have to learn this doctor or you have to learn that doctor. Let me tell you. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you that. Go to your Bible. Pray. The Lord will show you what the scriptures mean. You don't need men to tell you that. Now, if you want to read church history like I've done, and you want to read um, different doctrines and different uh, texts, and uh, I would say that uh, for the most part, I would go by uh, Calvin's teachings. They are uh, the Reformed teachings. They are the, the most accurate doctrinally, I believe. But more important to that is... Be a Puritan in your heart. Be a Puritan. Don't let anything, including institutions, men's institutions, compete with you hearing and walking in the Lord Jesus Christ if you truly know him. And this is what I found that Satan has tried to do with me. He's tried to use religious orders, men of God, so to speak, to, um, to get me to follow them or their teaching or their denomination rather than him in spirit. Can you believe it? I mean, Satan's a pretty shrewd dude. He knows what's going to get you off track. Error. Just a little bit of error in the, in, in the camp. Throws everything else off. A little leaven in, in the bread. You know, throws everything off track. And you can't hear. You have to get back to that perfect communion with your Lord where nothing's between you and him. And listen. Learn to listen, hear, and walk in his spirit and be obedient to him. And he'll make things happen. And he'll have the power of the Lord flowing through you. You know, I had a, I won't mention any names here, but I had a archbishop want me to be a priest. So I didn't have to learn anything. I could just learn how to set the table. Uh, I don't know why. It's amazing to me. Well, I'll tell you what I think is why. Because I think Satan wants to shut me up. But you know something? If I were to take that position within a large denomination, large respected denomination by the world, I might add, the power would go from me. Because in and of myself, I'm a bumbling idiot. And you could probably hear it in my speech right now. I have brain damage. You know, I have a brain injury and I have all I have all kinds of ailments now. Especially that I'm older. And um without the Lord Jesus Christ, without his power flowing through me, 
I'd, I'd be a bumbling idiot up there and behind the podium or uh, putting on the, the priest's robes. That's what these people don't understand. I am utterly dependent upon my Lord to move and function. I've always been. You have to be humble enough to hear the Lord. The way to God is down, not through our own abilities, but through dependency upon him, not independence. Independence is sin. Dependency, listening, and obedience is how you follow Christ. In accordance with the scriptures, and it's amazing to me that these liberal churches can take the scriptures because they're unsaved men, and Satan can twist the truth very easily. He's very good with the scriptures. But they can take the scriptures and they can cherry pick what they like and what they don't like. Well, the scriptures are there for a reason. If you abide in the scriptures, and it's not just a sociology thing where men were, well, God only used men back here, but things have changed. No, that's nonsense. Men were created to be men. Women were created to be women, woven out of men. God's creation doesn't change. God's order doesn't change. Sociology changes. You know, the society changes around us, but, but God is constant. How dare you say to God, we will do this and we will do that. Oh, that's a matter of interpretation. Well, for them it is. For, for the unsaved, it is a matter of uh, intellectual interpretation because they have nothing else. But if you're truly following the Lord, now I'm not saying you, you can't know the Lord and be an error. But if you're tr truly following the Lord, the Lord will point your error out to you. And what the error that he's shown me is that most of these organizations are the greatest error because it keeps me from following him, from listening to him in my heart. It competes with him. What is the greatest of all the commandments? Love the Lord thy God first. You shall have no other God before me. Well, that includes religion, dear friends. It includes religion. It includes school and it's cool and includes seminary listen to me i can hardly get the words out but please hear what i'm saying god uses the fullest things of the world to confound the wisdom of the wise because they're low enough to hear him and be dependent upon him not independent now we can do a great sermon without you jesus god doesn't need anybody and god doesn't love everybody either i'm sorry the love of god was to send the Lord Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for humanity, for those that would accept him. Okay, that was the love of God, to send Christ to the world. Um, that was God's love, and no more. It's not pink and fluffy Jesus stuff. God loves everybody. Yeah, he's not willing that any should perish. That's true. But still, his love was in the action of sending Jesus Christ. And his love is for those that will are chosen as sons and daughters of him. To him is to give the chance to become sons and daughters of Christ once they once they receive that blood sacrifice on their behalf. But we have to choose to walk in it, and we cannot compromise or do religion about God for God. All we can do is be obedient to God. Well, I hope this is making some sense to some people today. I know this is a little long, but uh, I had to get this off my chest because I see error all around me within the present day church. And I think that God is, um, has used the church in the past and great men of God in the past, despite the church. He's used them despite the church, not because of it. He's chose to shine his grace through preachers of the past despite their error to speak through them despite where they didn't know everything but um i think god's done with that god's trying to call his own unto himself he's saying come unto me follow me follow me and that's what the scripture talks about doing actually following him once you have come to christ it's talking about god's people it's not talking about unsaved people the scriptures for the most part, except for evangelizing and spreading the gospel, which he gave the apostles the job to do. Now we can share as God leads us to share with the lost. Certainly we can, but our primary 
job is to listen and to be totally obedient upon the Lord Jesus Christ within our hearts. And if you're going to church and that has replaced you listening to Christ in your heart, you're wrong. You're in sin. And don't be surprised if God doesn't say to you in the end, depart from me, I never knew you. And this is what God has had to do, do to me. He's had to pull me out of the little bit of contacts that I've had with the organizations. And he may be going to pull me out of the chaplaincy. I don't know. But I'm willing to do that because I'm willing to follow Christ. Doesn't matter what men think. All right, dear brethren. I know this is a harsh video, but these are very serious things that I've uh, the Lord shown to me in my life. And he's always, again, had me on the outside of what was uh, acceptable to the world. It's almost as if if the world accepts it, you want to stay away from it. All right, brothers and sisters, God bless you and pray about what I've said.